Day 78. In the Kharkiv region, the Ukrainian forces are pushing the Russians towards the administrative border. After the Ukrainians achieved success in the northeastern part of the Kharkiv region, they started to prepare another attack in the north. The objective of the next attack will be to take back the town Kozachalopan, which will allow them to tightly control a significant portion of the border nearby. On the other hand, this town does not provide a good opportunity for defense. Therefore, it is improper to assume that the actual defense line will go that close to the border. Their presence here will just allow to better respond to any developments in this part of the region. In the northeast, the fights for the town Velika Komoshovaha are basically over. The fights are taking place in the suburbs, which means that the Russians have virtually full control over this town. In the Borvinkova direction, the Russians are facing high resistance from the Ukrainians and struggle to gain more ground. Their expansion to the east from Izum has also brought no major changes yet. Even though there are some fights near the town Sviatohirsk, the Russians did not manage to push the Ukrainian artillery out of the region, therefore the Ukrainians can still hold the Russians off to the north of this town. In the east, the Russians start to actively storm the town Severodonetsk from the north. Today they have established control over the factories that are located in the southern part of the town Rubizhne. This is where the last Ukrainians in this town continue to resist. They have also taken the small village Voivodivka that is located between Rubizhne and Severodonetsk. Once the control was established, the fight started to take place in the northern part of Severodonetsk. The Ukrainian forces in Lusychansk continued to counter the attempts of the Russian to move across the local river by destroying their passages and troops that managed to get across. Simultaneously, the fights for the village Toshkovka continue to take place. The Russians are also still fighting on the southern suburbs of the town Zolote. In the south, the Ukrainians are reporting attacks in Orihiv, Hulepole and Vuhledar. The attacks are not massive, so it is likely that the Russians continue to test the Ukrainian defense and try to find weak links. The Russians are also too focused on their operation in the east that requires them to send more and more troops to that region in order to succeed. Therefore, no big changes are expected to happen here. In the second southern direction, according to the American Institute for the Study of War, the Russian forces are ready to take the whole Mykolaiv region. Unlike in the first southern direction, the situation here is very tense because of the additional pressure from the Prednistrovian Moldovian Republic that is expected to take part in this war. Because the Ukrainians expect the Prednistrovians to hit Ukraine in the back once the Russians start a massive advancement from the east, the Ukrainians are planning to take a preventative action and strike first. The Russians understand this, and it is in their interest to be the first one to strike. The fact that they have recently started to destroy the Ukrainian air defense in the Odessa region seems to suggest that they are planning to move deep into the region and make it very quickly. According to the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, by the end of the 78th day of the war, the Russians had lost 199 airplanes, 161 helicopters, 1,187 tanks, 2,873 armored fighting vehicles, and 26,650 soldiers. I will continue to make daily updates on the situation, so stay tuned.